Thanks, everybody. This is a slightly different take on digital scholarship. Um, what I've been looking at is what happens when researchers of any discipline goes out into the field in terms, particularly in terms of their data collection practices as well as um, data, data storage when they're away from the campus and so on. Um, so a little bit of orientation. I'm from the University of Guelph, which is about an hour west of Toronto. Um, it's a campus with a population of about 20,000 students. Our main um, areas of focus are um, agriculture and veterinary science. We're a little bit, um, I like to think of us as sort of the Canadian Cornell. Um, I'm head of research enterprise and scholarly communication, so um, we're responsible for supporting all research activity on campus. And I also at this point wanted to acknowledge, acknowledge CARL, which is the Canadian Association of Research Libraries. Um, I was um, fortunate to have a, a research grant from CARL that enabled me to do some of this work. So um, what I wanted to talk about really is um, paper data collection versus um, the use of mobile technology. So this is just a, a, an example of what happens traditionally with researchers when they go out into the field where they're recording their observations on paper, then that data has to be transcribed into the computer, which essentially results in double data entry as well as errors that come in dur during the transcription process. Um, so what I was interested in, well, beyond that, there's also the vulnerability vulnerability of paper records. So you're, when you're relying, your single source of data um, for some period of time is, is the paper itself, which is very vulnerable to um, adverse weather conditions, water damage, th even loss. Um, so I think there's great potential for um, efficiencies in using mobile technology, where you enter the data once, um, immediately have it stored on a secure server and where it's immediately available for analysis. As well, when you're using mobile technologies, you have added capabilities such as capturing GPS location, um, incorporating multimedia. In the um, data collection tool itself, you can include data validation and authority files to um, improve the quality of your data at the outset. Um, we also are working on tie-ins with this data collection using mobile technology with our mandate for research data management, um, so data sharing, data preservation um, through the library. So um, th I undertook research starting off basically at ground zero with this. Um, I undertook some research to try to determine what options were available to researchers. Um, so beginning with a lit review, um, there's a lot of information traditionally about libraries um, delivering services and information using mobile technology, but not a lot about mobile technologies as a support for field research. Um, there's also what literature there is, there's some information, especially in developing countries, about dissemination of inf information to people that have mobile technologies. Um, but again, not so much on the, the data collection. This was one report that I found um, particularly relevant, and I'll just um, read a segment of this quote. The potential mobile phones hold in this regard is striking. Compared to a traditional process using paper and pencil forms with later transcription to a computer system, mobile devices offer immediate digitization and transmission of collected data at point of survey, followed by automated data aggregation. As such, mobile phones promise faster, more cost-effective, and, co and more accurate surveys. So um, following the lit review, I looked at actual technologies um, to support this activity. So in terms of data, data collection, I looked at app development um, for mobile phones, SMS um, mechanisms for capturing data, um, DBMS on uh, mobile devices, web forms, various specialist devices that have been um, developed for particular disciplines, for particular fields, specialist software, data storage practices in terms of um, use of cloud, the cloud for data storage, as well as remote use of campus infrastructure, data security when people are, researchers are away from campus, um, device protection and data access. Uh, 
Um, then I um, moved on to conducting interviews with researchers to find out um, what their current practices have been. So these are sort of the five areas that I covered in terms of um, interviews with researchers. What is the field environment that they're working in? And this can be anything from, as I had mentioned, uh, University of Guelph has a lot of agricultural research, so it can be field research that actually is quite local, but uh, out in the, the fields, or it can be people working internationally in developing countries or wherever. Um, what are their data collection practices? What are their do data storage practices? What use, uh, if any, do they make of mobile devices? And then what do they do with their data upon return? Um, I interviewed roughly 25 researchers in a range of disciplines, including geography, biology, environmental design and rural devel development, plant agriculture, environmental science, political science, anthropology, population medicine. Um, and I'll share with you my favorite story that I came uh, across with those interviews was a researcher who was working in Mexico and uh, down in Mexico he had bought a truck that he had to go to various sites to conduct his research. He was doing all of his data collection in paper. These paper records were stored in the truck and then his truck was stolen. Um, so good news, bad news. Um, the good news is that the police managed to find his truck and they were re willing to return it to him, but only if he would buy it back from them. So he wasn't the least bit concerned about the truck, but he desperately needed his data back. So he did buy the truck and the data was still in the truck. So just an illustration of the vulnerability of having paper as a source for um, your data. So I'll tell you a little bit about, there's a whole range of um, technical components that can feed into this landscape, but there's one particular um, collection of tools that I've been focusing on in terms of um, solutions for researchers. And this is uh, the base of it, which is the Open Data Kit. It's all basically open source software that we're talking about. Um, open Data Kit, ODK, was developed at the University of Washington and is, a, is the core of an ecosystem of open source tools. They received financial support from Google Open Data Kit itself is really Android specific, um, but there are other tools that broaden that to other devices. It has components for build, collect, and aggregate of the data. FormHub um, is one of the um, components that's developed around o the ODK um, environment. And this is really a platform for um, capturing the data and also it can be used to share um, um, data collection instruments. So if you have got a survey or another form of data collection instrument, you can share that with other researchers through this platform. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the actual workflow that would be involved for researchers. Um, so this is, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped my slides. This, this is actually the, uh, I was talking about um, um, FormHub, and this is, this is the FormHub slide, um, which was developed at Columbia, and it's an altern alternative to ODK aggregate, again, hosting of data, sharing of forms. Um, uh, this slide was actually about XLS form, which is a simple technology where your um, data collection instrument can be defined in an Excel spreadsheet, and then when it's uploaded to something like um, FormHub, it's automatically converted into an app that can be used in the field. Um, and Enquito is another component of this landscape, and the role that Enquito plays is for non-Android devices. It essentially takes the same Excel spreadsheet, and rather than turning it into the um, Android app, it turns it into a web-based um, application that can be used on any device. Um, so then I wanted to talk a little bit about my actual experience with this technology. Um, I mentioned the grant that I received from the Canadian Association of Research Libraries. That grant um, essentially enabled me to um, take a trip to Bolivia where I could work with researchers. I was particularly interested in finding out what are researchers experience in developing countries where they're really removed from the kinds of um, support and infrastructure that they're used to on campus. So I um, 
was able to go to Bolivia and wor work in three different cities with um, three different research organizations. Um, this is a group of people that I worked with in La Paz at uh, a university in La Paz. Um, they were conducting um, a major household survey throughout the poorer regions of Bolivia, four to 5,000 households, a very extensive survey. And the results of their survey, which was all conducted on paper, were five tons of paper that were amassed in their offices that, again, all had to be transcribed. Whenever there were data anomalies, they had to do forensics with this stockpile of, of paper. So I was um, introducing them to the concept of replacing all that paper with um, mobile technology. Um, this is a um, researcher that I worked with in uh, Cochabamba. Um, where she was, she's an agricultural researcher, and essentially what she was doing is going out into the field and measuring crops, her, her research crops, in terms of growth and yield of the, the crops. And she had major problems with paper data collection, including um, trying to work in adverse weather conditions. So while I was with her, I developed an app that she continued to use thereafter. And the third organization, this was in Santa Cruz in Bolivia, and it was an indigenous agricultural research um, organization that I worked with. Um, back at the University of Guelph, um, there was a research team heading to Cambodia to do a fisheries survey. Um, there's a major lake in Cambodia that provides virtually all the fish in the country and it was being de depleted. So they were doing uh, an extensive survey on fisheries activities in Cambodia. So again, we developed uh, the survey using the technology that I described. Um, the graduate student who is administering um, or overseeing the project, she was in Cambodia for three months um, using these tools. Um, she said that she probably saved a month of her time in terms of transcribing the data um, and that she was able to do immediate progressions even while she was in the field. And another thing that she found um, very advantageous was e being able to capture the GPS locations of various sites where people were doing their fishing. So that was very uh, useful for her. And then the final example that I wanted to cite this is where um, I was working with a third year class at our university. It's a class called Discovering Biodiversity. And there's about 2,000 students um, who take this class. <clears throat> and what they do is they are divided up into groups of four. They're given a plot of land in the, the bush. And they have to identif identify all the plants um, that are in that particular plot. Um, Previous iterations of this class, again, all the data was collected on paper. It was left to graduate students to transcribe all this data as quickly as possible so that the class could then work with the data through the rest of the course. So again, we developed a very simple app which um, allowed the students co to collect the data on mobile devices and it was immediately available for um, analysis. So a little bit about the process. Here's a couple of um, illustrations of what the process is like. Basically, design your, your research instrument in Excel, do the um, collecting of data, and immediately the analysis. And this schematic shows, shows more or less the same thing. So to start with this um, Excel format for designing your, um, your instruments, the, there's a, a worksheet in the background which shows you how you just basically structure, define what data elements you want, various data typing, various constraints on the data that can be entered. And this is just a, uh, an example where you can have an authority file. So this was used by the class that was um, doing the work in the bush where they'll have the scientific names for plants matched up with the common names. And so they could just select those from a list as they were um, as they were working in the field. Then, as I say, when that's uploaded to the platform, it's automatically converted into an app. Um, th these are just two examples. This is the Enkido web-based version, and this is the uh, Android version here. Um, this just shows you, again, an example of actually populating the app. So again, the authority file with um, selecting a value there. 
Um, then, as I say, immediately available for download. You can download as CSV or as uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, the final sort of phase of the process, as I say, one of the mandates of the library is to work in research data management. So we're looking at as this um, data is collected in the field, we're storing it on a library server where it'll be secure. And then our objective is to have that migrate to the data repository for sharing and long-term preservation. So that's it. And again, I wanted to, uh, one more time, give acknowledgement to the Canadian Association of Research Libraries who made this uh, research possible. So if there's any questions or comments.